Let's go ahead and get started. Good morning, everyone. Glad to see you all. We got people from all over the place, Italy and Hawaii and somewhere in the, the forest. The forest somewhere. I know where you guys, I don't know where you guys went in particular for the marriage retreat, but uh, welcome this morning. So we're continuing our eight to ten week session on um, evangelism. And the past few weeks we've done some, incorporated some basic principles of practical evangelism. And we have done a couple, well, rather, we've done one demonstration of like what it might look like to evangelize, you know, a role play. Last time it was an animal activist, um, Penny and Pat, so that was fun. Uh, I don't know how often that's going to happen, but it might, so I'm glad we did it. Uh, this morning, um, before we get into the, the scenario, uh, it's going to be between a Jehovah's Witness and a Christian, you know, sharing the gospel. Um, Wang is going to come up and share his testimony, specifically as it relates to receiving a gospel tract. Um, and so, you know, we kind of have been emphasizing from the pulpit on Sundays, and just as we've been kind of sharing with you guys to come out, we've been saying, hey, evangelism could be as simple as just handling, handing out a gospel tract. Um, you know, we don't have to overcomplicate things. As in all things, we grow in evangelism, as in teaching, or preaching, or whatever we do. It could be in music, you know, becoming a better musician. It's over time and repetition. So we don't expect that you come out and you're just open-air preaching to everyone, you know, or you're able to easily go through a one-on-one -on -one conversation and answer every question and go through every obstacle and get into the gospel. That's not very practical, but what is very simple is you can hand out a track, you know, or you can even, again, just observe uh, just to at least be in that environment and learn. So Wayne's going to share uh, his testimony because it does involve receiving a gospel track. So we'll bring him on up first, and then we'll get into our um, demonstration. So come on up, Wayne. Well, I know some of you have already heard my, you know, my testimony, and you know, uh, was there when I got baptized again and so I'm just going to keep it short and concise um, it was around uh, it was around 2018 when the Lord opened my eyes and it was through a a simple track and so it was one that was similar to this I, it didn't uh, look exactly like this but it was one that was um, that had the same title which was the scientific facts in the Bible and and when I look back at everything you know God had already been preparing uh, my heart to meet this this little old lady uh, that day um, and and prior to meeting her uh, God had already placed me in a in a Christian home too and he had allowed me to taste the guilt of of, of breaking the laws of the land and and he had been orchestrating events after events in my life and and to, to get me to that very that very day when I met that little old lady on the on the bus and and on that day, God, God used her, and God used her, and, you know, she didn't fear, she didn't fear me or man, she, she feared God, and she faithfully gave me a gospel track that day, and it was through that, that track that led me to a true conviction of sin towards God, and not just man-made laws, but to God himself, and, and through it, I saw my need, I saw my need for, for the Savior, for our Lord Jesus Christ. And today, when I look back, I now understand that this little old lady, you know, she had a, a, a strong conviction of using tracks. You know, this little old lady understood the power of, of gospel tracks, and she didn't, under, uh, she didn't underestimate them. She knew that, you know, the gospel track, that, um, that it carried a, a saving message. It, it carried the saving message of the gospel. You know, and we, we all understand that Paul, Paul says that it is the gospel you know, it is, it's, it's the gospel that is the power of salvation. And, and, I, and I believe this little old lady, she knew the power that it carried in these simple gospel tracts. And, and as one street preacher has said before, and I'm sure you guys have heard this before, gospel tracts are paper missionaries. And they can go places where we can't go. Um, and so I believe that she knew that if I was to take this, it would get into my home. And, and, it, and, it, and it did. And my wife was saved through this as well. And so my, my, my point in giving this testimony is to uh, just, you know, to, to encourage us, 
it's not just, but it is to encourage, you know, us to, to pass out tracks, to, you know, to, to utilize something that we don't even need to use our voice. You know, we can just hand them out. And it's because, I, I, you know, I truly believe that, you know, God is preparing um, the soil. We, we, we don't know. You know, we don't know what God is doing. We don't know if he's been tilling, you know, the soil. We don't know if he's been chipping away at stony hearts. We don't know if the Lord has been removing obstacles that are hindering uh, uh, the seed of the gospel. And so we, we don't know if a heart is ready or not, you know. And, and I, I have to say that, you know, we, 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 we may not know, but one thing I do know for sure is that we, we know that he does save in his timing. And he is faithful in doing that. And so that's why today I, I carry tracks with me and I distribute them because I was saved through you know, it was, it, was, it was that means that God used to draw me to himself. And, and tracks really require minimal skills. You guys, it's just, you're, you're just handing it out. You don't even have to say anything. And um, if you believe you're an introvert, you know, I, and, and, you, and if you feel like you can't do this work, I just want to ask you guys, you know, two questions. And, and um, you know, and these two questions is, uh, have you guys ever stood in front of someone and can't look them in the eye while you're speaking? Um, have you guys ever stood in, in a classroom for a presentation and ended up crying and was told to sit down? Anyone? <laughs> well, that was me. Before the Lord uh, did his work in me, before I trusted in him, that was me. I was, I was afraid of, you know, just talking to people. I was afraid of, of, of just getting up and just sharing or doing presentations. I, I, I was, I was, I was very, you know, I get very nervous and I break down. And so that, that used to be me, but I believe that the Lord can work through anything. And I, I believe that if he has done that with me, he can do that with you guys as well. And, um, and he's given us every means to do that, you know, and, and it's, and it's his ordinary means of, of just hearing the word preach, you know, reading the word, prayer, worship, the sacraments, the church, you know, just the fellowship of the saints, all that, is his way of, of building us up. And so I, I, I truly believe that this is what's going to fuel our, our, our zeal. It's going to spark the fire within us. And, and I've, I've seen that within me, you know, and, and, uh, and I, I believe this is, it's, it's, it can be as simple as that, you know, just, just handing out a track. It, it can start with that. And, you know, just one last encouragement before I kind of just end here is, is that, you know, as one preacher has put it, um, you know, we, we can't fail in evangelism. And the only time we fail in evangelism is, is when we don't do evangelism. That's, that's, that's when we fail. And so we, we, can't, we can't fail in evangelism. We're, when we do this, we're actually accomplishing the work of, evang of an evangelist. And so passing out of a track is basically doing that. And so I hope that this encourages you guys, you know, and um, in, in summary, then just, uh, you know, the Lord will and can use uh, tracks to save his people. And, and I'm an example of that. And, and again, tracks require very minimal uh, work. And so, thank you guys. Thank you, brother. What a great encouragement. Um, just hearing about Wang's testimony, but his testimony is a testimony of many. Um, so, you know, and... Uh, I like that piece there at the end, Wayne, just kind of encouraging us that you weren't even an outgoing person or it was very difficult for you to even engage with people or have a conversation. I think a lot of us probably are like that. Not maybe not to certain degrees as others, but it's the Lord that gives boldness. He's the one. And it's amazing. It's, uh, you know, I, Mark asked me last week and he was, he was like, are you scared? Are you nervous when you open air preach? You know, I'm like, yeah, everybody's a little nervous, you know, before we do it. But Truly, the Spirit of God gives us boldness. This is something that is, is done, it's a work of God. And as much as salvation was a work of God in your lives, so is evangelism. Exactly. So, <laughs> so uh, it is, it's a work of the Spirit moving through His people to share the gospel. You, do you not know that this is a God who wants to save people? He's desiring to save people and He will use us as means. Um, and one thing too, so we always talk about gospel tracts and we're like, hey, there's gospel tracts out there and take a gospel track. I would encourage you to read through one, read through them all. Just take a look at what you're handing out to others, right? 
And as you familiar, uh, familiarize yourself with the gospel track, you'll then maybe then have the boldness to say, hey, just a moment, can I share something with you? And maybe start to just even um, go through the track. Um, uh, real quick, last Thursday when we went out, uh, there was a man, I won't get into the, the granular details of it, I had heard earlier in that morning, just kind of preparing myself for evangelism, you know, you listen to YouTube videos and you're, you know, whatever, looking at resources to reading the word. And one guy was like, you know, it's as simple sometimes as just literally saying, hey, can I, can I do a small Bible study with you real quick? And that sounds crazy, but people are willing to. And he's like, you can literally just read through the gospel track with somebody. And you know what? That very night, that's exactly what I did. So there was a guy who... Um, Asked him a few questions, engaged him a little bit, and uh, we then sat down, and I went through this gospel track right here called Two Ways to Live. What's incredible is this, this is like 35 pages. <laughs> no, it's not. It's like seven or eight pages. But uh, he sat through it all, and it was a great presentation of the gospel, but it really con you know, confronts our, our standing before God, that we're sinners, and that there's two ways. We can continue as rebels against God. Um, and what's crazy is as I'm sharing him about the rebels, like they don't want God, they don't want to obey him. There's cars passing by screaming at Caleb, shut up, you know, like shut up. Uh, they were not in not those words either. Uh, <laughs> and you guys are like, I don't want to go now. Uh, so, um, but I was like, see exactly as it says here, you know, um, but he listened through the whole thing and then it asked for a response. So, you know, at the end it asked for a response. And um, so that being said, it could be as simple as, handing it out, but it also could be like, hey, can I, can I share this with you? W would you want to do a small Bible, a short Bible study with me? And you'd be surprised how people would say, yeah, okay, sure, why not, you know? People are seeking, too, by the way. People are genuinely seeking, you know, remember that. You know, you think that people have their minds made up. They don't. Some of them do. I think the majority don't, though. I think the majority of folks are genuinely seeking for truth or for answers or purpose, meaning in life, whatever, so they're more open than you would expect. Um, so with that being said, um, here's some gospel tracks. I'll put them over here. We have a ton, um, all kinds of different ones. Uh, and uh, we'll get into our demonstration now. So this morning we have uh, Jehovah's Witness and Wang the Evangelist. So Caleb will be Je Jehovah's Witness. Oh, sorry. Switch that. Um, and so, um, or who's the evangelist? You are. Oh, okay. Who can we? All right. Okay. I have my notes all backwards, so we'll figure it out. Yeah. You'll be able to tell. Perfect. Okay. I'm, that's good. I'm glad you told me that. Uh, okay. So that being said, we'll have them come up and then I kind of just give you the format. So the first one is going to be an obvious didn't go well, right? It's a gospel defeater is what we call it. So we'll do that first and then we'll do some dialogue ask some questions, uh, get some interaction from you guys. Um, I will say I'm going to do a little bit slightly different than last week's in the second and the first demonstration that we do. I'll kind of lead it a little bit. Of course, I want to open it up. I want you guys to be able to ask questions, but I kind of want to guide it a little bit because we took time to prepare this script and place things that were very important kind of along the way, and I kind of want to point those out. So bear with us. Um, and uh, also, too, these are not paid actors. Okay, <laughs> they're incredibly talented, but they're not paid actors. We're just doing this to give you guys a little taste of what it might look like. All right. So uh, Wayne and Caleb, come on up. Oh, good. Okay. <clears throat> hey, how's it going, man? My name's Caleb. What's yours? Hold on. So, oh. we, so we got to set up the scene. Oh. Sorry, you guys. Sorry. So, the is, uh, <laughs> <laughs> so the scene is. So the scene is soccer practice on a Saturday and um, the evangelist and the JW they meet for the first time and usually it's the uh, Jehovah Witnesses his wife who takes the son to practice okay. good all right hey how's it going man my name's Caleb nice my name, to meet you my name's George uh, nice to meet you okay you're Joseph's dad right yes that's correct that's my boy okay you got one fine athlete there usually it's your wife Jane I see right yeah it's it's usually her she's pretty awesome she's been taking the brunt of it all while I'm doing a field work my Saturdays are quite busy. Okay, uh, field work, what do you mean by that? Oh, I'm a, I'm a Jehovah Witness. I uh, put in hours each week to proclaim Jehovah's Kingdom. You're a what? A Jehovah's Witness? 
you know you're in a cult, right? <laughs> I've heard a lot about you guys. You have your own Bible. You don't believe in celebrating birthdays or Christmas. I think you're deceived, man. Dude, you're, you're entitled to your own beliefs. Now you shouldn't judge me. You have some strange theology. You know, the scripture speaks of your kind all over the Bible. It's, it speaks of those who can't brittle their tongue, and they set forth on fire, fires, uh, forest fires everywhere they go. I think the scriptures speak more of your kind. You guys think you know everything. You think you understand the Trinity, but you really have no idea about these things. Well, well, thank you for validating the scriptures for me. You have a nice day. Look, I'm an evangelist from the Cornerstone. God is, <laughs> God is, God is holy and angry at you every single day because you're a sinner. You need Jesus to save you from your sins. You need to repent, sir, and turn to Christ while he's giving you time. Peace, man. You have a good one. Look, the <laughs> wicked flee when no one's pursuing, but the righteous <laughs> are bold as a lion. Sir, think about your son. <laughs> All right, cut, cut. Cut scene. <laughs> Great job, guys. So obviously it's a bit exaggerated um, of what not to do, uh, but there's some important things in here. But before we kind of get into, you know, the obvious things that went wrong, um, what about, did you guys observe anything that kind of went, that actually went well? Like any, anything, any, any thoughts on what went well? And by the way, please take notes. If, if you have the ability to take notes, you have a notepad note. Uh, pen, take notes of maybe the things you're observing. Anything that went well in this conversation? Andy. I think assuming there was a grain of truth, um, any time you compliment a gentleman on his athleticism with his son, that's always going to be a great evaluation. 100%. The introduction, yeah. Yeah, the introduction. So, um, yeah, we're dealing with human beings. So, just as in business or any other normal relationships that we build, it starts by building rapport and it is the, you know, just that compliment of, Hey, your son's a, a great athlete. Um, as long as that's honest, because he could be the worst athlete. So, <laughs> you know, but, but also ultimately it's winsome and, and it also, it builds that rapport. So yeah, that's a good point, Andy. What else, what else kind of, what went well in the conversation? I like what he asked you were, what, what do you mean by yeah, was curious about yeah, feel worse. So at least he engaged. It's kind of like, actually, so that point too, at least he like inquired and kind of got it because he could have just been like, oh, okay, moving on back to sports because that's our tendency. I think that, you know, that's what our, really our flesh wants to do is we want to avoid these conversations or altogether, we don't even want to have a conversation. So we might not even say, hey, I'm Caleb, you know, and, and introduce and we just want to kind of avoid people altogether. Some of us kind of are bent that way. But at least he engaged the conversation and then asked kind of some questions, inquiring questions. Um, so even the small things of a compliment, I just want to point out before we get into what went bad, but even the small things of just giving that compliment, it may seem in insignificant, but it is to build the rapport, to kind of start a relationship. And it really helps us to get into, hopefully, uh, a gospel conversation. So, yeah, Ernie. Yeah, he seemed friendly at first. Yeah, <laughs> he's deceiving. Uh, no. Um, okay, very good. Yeah, shook his hand, showed him respect. Um, all those things are, are incredibly important. Um, okay, so what about what went wrong? So let's, let's go into first kind of like what was the tipping point of where things went wrong? What do you guys think? Yeah. You and your big title. Yeah. Kind of, you know yeah. It's, it could be a good thing, but maybe not. Yeah, for sure. Um, <laughs> maybe if the conversation went well, <laughs> he, he right. could have introduced himself. Hey, I'm an evangelist, and I go to the corner somewhere. But in this case, he's like, hey, by the way, I'm an evangelist, you know. I got something to share with you. Yeah, no, you're okay. I'm sorry, You're okay? No, don't worry about it. What is an evangelist? Like, what is that? Yeah. I know what it is. Yeah, I think there's a particular role and gifting of an evangelist that, that God has given to the church, just like teachers and pastors. But, you know, all of us are called to evangelism. So in some sense, 
we can be evangelists. Even uh, Paul ta- t- uh, spoke of do the work of an evangelist. So even elders can be evangelists. So all of us, the body of Christ, in some sense are responsible the role for evangelism and can assume the role of an evangelist. For sure. Yeah, it's a non could be. Well, he's a Jehovah's Witness, so he probably knows. Yeah. Yeah. But your ordinary person may be like, what are you talking about? Evangelist. Yeah. No, you're okay. Um, So how about the the tipping point, though? Like, when did things go wrong in this conversation? (laughs) Yeah. Yeah, just boom. I mean, he was, cult. yeah, cult, yeah, <laughs> exactly. Yeah, you know you're in a cult, right? Uh, I, he stopped asking questions and just started. Yeah, right. He asked a question, he got an answer, and he was like, oh, it's time now. I've been, you know, I've been reading books about you guys, you know. I've been watching video, YouTube videos, you know. Uh, this opportunity time. Uh, yeah, it was basically when he said, of course, that he was a Jehovah's Witness, but that he does got, you know, Jehovah's Kingdom's work. Um, but he says a lot of inflammatory things here, right? Of course, he said, you know, you know, you're in a cult, right? You know, that's, that's one thing. But he, he said these like sweeping statements of like, I've heard a lot about you guys. You guys have your own Bible. You know, he said stuff, you know, you don't believe in celebrating holidays. I mean, you went in uh, <laughs> on... <laughs> <laughs> even the holidays you had to give them a hard time about their holidays uh and then there were some really strong things there it's like i think you've been deceived um strange theology you don't understand the trinity so are these things wrong though about jehovah's witness the answer is no these these things are actually right but he's using a machine gun and just blowing this guy away right so it's not it, it's like that truth is true i mean it is true However, is it an effective approach in sharing the gospel with George? Um, what are some, like, what could be a, maybe you're not a Jehovah's Witness, but just imagine you don't know the gospel and someone's just like, oh man, are you drinking? Are you smoking? Are you fornicating? Are you doing all those things? Man, you need to stop, man. You need to turn from that, you know, pointing out all of the potential sins they're doing. I mean, it's going to put them off guard. They're going to shut down. They're like, what? It's, you know, it's a, uh, there's no graciousness in it. Uh, yeah. I did the opposite one time of what Caleb did here. I had two guys hanging grapes in our house, and I started talking to one, and he was kind of going, he said he'd been to church, and so I was just going down that road, and I was talking all about the Bible, the church, and all that, and I just happened to say, hey, how about you, the other guy? He goes, well, I'm a Jehovah's Witness. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that, that, was, that was, I was waiting for the response. Yeah. I was like, in that moment, when he was like, like talk. Yeah. <laughs> I asked questions, but I, I just was not expecting that. And then my mind went away. And, and it went from all this conversation about Bible church to nothing. Yeah. It's like, I yeah. was obviously condemning him without words. Yeah. You have no, I have no relation to you. I Man. have no understanding of you. you know? That's really good, bro. That's a good, Andy. Mm. I would have been more inclined to follow up with Wayne and ask about his faith. Wow. Mm. Just by the interaction. Because Wayne, a little bit of humility. I mean, he threw a couple of guys back, but he was still much more grounded than the human character. Man, that is, that's great. That's crazy, actually, to think, because in a lot of these settings, you are going to probably be around people, potentially. I mean, in this context, they were at a practice or soccer game. Um, so, yeah, you probably have others watching. You know, even in our street evangelism too, you know, um, that could be the same case. And people are hearing, listening, and um, yeah, even at a coffee shop. Even if you're sharing the gospel with someone at a coffee shop, you know, you think everybody's kind of just doing their own thing, but they can hear everything. You ever been in a coffee shop? Like, I think they're hearing everything we're saying, bro. You're telling me all your secret sins. No, uh, you know, no, not at all. But uh, so yeah, that's a great being kind of aware of your audience and. You know, it goes into, um, and I made this as a point, was um, we have to remember that, the, you know, though people have different beliefs than us, 
they're not our enemies. We got to get that out of our mind. We're not supposed to be on the offense, you know, necessarily. I mean, we can, um, you know, we obviously want to get the truth to them, but we don't want to lose sight of important things like our conduct and our speech conforming to Christ's likeness. You know, it says in Colossians 4, 6, it says this, letting our speech always be with grace and seasoned with salt. So that doesn't just go out the window in evangelism, right? Um, and a good evangelist, which I believe Pat will go into next week, is you know someone who loves Christ, who loves people, and who loves the gospel. But you can't just love the gospel and hate people, you know, or love Christ, love people, and not love the gospel. They are all very important when we're sharing the gospel with others. Um, so I love at the end there though the zinger that you threw the. Um, you know, of course, you tried to like share the gospel. It was way too late. But then even at the end, you know, the wicked flee when no one pursues, <laughs> you know, but the righteous are as bold as lions. Uh, I think the wicked were fleeing because you're a bad evangelist. <laughs> I think that was more accurate. Um, anyways, OK, any other thoughts, any other um, observations? We got a couple here. Yeah. Yeah, no, that's very good. I have to get my mind there, you know? Yeah. Be reminded. But for the grace of God, I go on. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Nancy. Uh, there was a comment that Wayne made uh, near the end. Uh, I watched the Jehovah's Witness witnessing film a while back. And I, anyway, one of the things that they uh, they have, like a self-fulfilling prophecy, is that they when they get persecuted by somebody, it's like, <coughs> oh, I, I, must, I must have the truth. Mm. And he said some line about that. Yeah, yeah that was intentional. Yeah. yeah, it is, it is that. So it proves his faith when somebody's attacking him. Oh. You know, like Caleb and Dave. Good little tidbit there. Yeah. Um, can you elaborate on that just slightly, or is yeah, it just so, basically? Um, so they do, you know, just like us, we believe that there, there are persecutions, and so when, when we're out there sharing and we get persecuted, we, we, we see the scriptures come alive. And so for them, it's coming alive for them too, as well, when we persecute them. Or like when, when it's kind of like in this scenario, then they, they feel like, hey, what the Watchtower has been teaching me, it's true. They are the mm. true prophet now. And, so, yeah. and it gets a little bit more <clears throat> sinister because the founders of the Jehovah's Witness, you know, whenever they, the character, when you dive into it, a lot of these guys, they just have really just sketchy backgrounds. And so when you bring those things up, it's almost like, to your point, oh, you guys are just persecuting us or making this stuff up to make them look, you know, in a certain light. So especially when it comes to the character of their founders and things of that sort. Maybe all the more reason we can't, we shouldn't give them that on us in the sense that we are going to be very humble and gracious and kind in our conduct, you know, um, and not a, well, we're going to get into the good example and we'll see a much better way <laughs> of handling this. Um, okay, so before we get into the good example, anything else? Caleb or Wang or anything? Caleb, you, you don't, I'm sorry, Wang, you wrote, wrote the script. Anything else that you saw or potentially put in there? No, I guess uh, just, um, you know, like what Pat was kind of like helping us to see was like, you know, the fallacies, the, the three fallacies. And so there was, you know, um, you know, the, the evangelist was attacking the, the character, which, you know, we've been learning that it's the ad hominem. It's ad like hominem was attack, a, yeah. Attacking the Jehovah Witness in, in that way. And so, there, yeah, so, you know, hopefully you guys saw that and um, just just straw manning him, you know, and not, not even asking questions. And so, um, that, that's very bad, you know, so. Yeah. yeah. All right. Okay. So now we're going to do uh, number two. And this is a, a better example of what we should do. Good. 
All right. Hey, how's it going? My name's Caleb. What's your name? My name's George. Nice to meet you. Uh, you're Joseph's dad, right? Yeah, correct. That's my boy. Oh, man, you got one fine athlete there. Usually it's your wife, Jane, I see with Joseph, right? Yeah, it's usually Jane. She's, she's pretty awesome. She's been taking the brunt of it all while I do uh, field work, and my Saturdays are quite busy. Okay. Uh, you said field work. What do you do, if you don't mind me asking? Yeah, I'm a, I'm a Jehovah Witness. I put in hours each week to proclaim Jehovah's kingdom. Um, have you ever heard of the gospel of, uh, the, or the good news of the kingdom? Uh, yes, I have. I'm not a Jehovah's Witness, though. Uh, I'm a Christian, by the way. Oh, Jehovah's Witnesses are Christians, too. We love to proclaim the good news of, a, of a Jehovah's kingdom. Okay. Um, what do you mean when you say the good news of the kingdom? What does that mean to you anyways? Well, in a nutshell, the good news of the kingdom is that Jehovah will make the earth into a peaceful, beautiful uh, place called paradise. This is where, if you are saved, you can live uh, forever. This is where Satan is removed. This is where there's no more sickness, suffering, disabilities, or death. Uh, we get to live in peace, and we get to enjoy our families. So in a nutshell, uh, that's what the good news of the, of the kingdom is. Okay, that's interesting. Uh, you mentioned that if a person is saved, they can enter into this place called paradise. So how can a person be saved and enter into such place? That's a very great uh, question. So first and foremost, a person must join God's organization, and you must trust in God's organization for salvation. And, and God has placed this organization here on earth to be that voice uh, for all true believers. And then secondly, you must see Jehovah as your father. And, and then you have to see the organization as your mother. And like a mother, she's the one that gives nourishment, guidance, and protection to her children. And then thirdly, um, in the scripture, it says in Philippians chapter 2, verse 12, uh, it says, Consequently, my, uh, my beloved ones, just as you have always obeyed, not only during my presence, but now much more readily during my absence, keep working out your own salvation with fear and trembling. And so this means that, to really be saved, one must be an active Jehovah Witness and consistently following all the rules and, and regulations of the society. And so this is what I believe when it comes to being saved or having salvation. Okay, gotcha. I think that makes sense. Um, if you don't mind me asking, how did you come to this conclusion of all these things that you have listed will help a person get to this place called paradise? Okay, I have, so there's two passages that we, that we look at uh, to, to come to these conclusions. And so it's in Acts 8. Uh, verse 30 to 31 and so it says Philip ran up and heard him reading Isaiah the prophet and said do you understand what you are reading and he said well how can I how can I unless someone guides me and he invited Philip to come up and sit with him and then the other the passage that we look at is 2nd Peter chapter 1 verse 20 through 21 and it says for you know this first that no prophecy of Scripture springs from any private interpretation for prophecy was at no time at no time brought by man's will, but men spoken from God as they were moved by the Holy Spirit. And so as you can see, these verses helps us to see why we need to join God's organization. We cannot learn on our own, and we can't in interpret scriptures on our own. Um, and, and apart from the organization, we cannot know what's true or false. And so can, can, you, can you see how I'm, I'm coming to those conclusions? Yeah, I, I, I've read those verses, and I, I believe them. But it's interesting how you came to those conclusions. Well, just, just, just think about it. How many boats were there during the flood? Uh, there was only one. Exactly. There was only one. So during the flood, uh, God only used one boat and not, and not many to save Jehovah's people during that time. And so likewise, during the tribulations, he will only use one organization to save his people. Make sense? Okay. What was the third thing you mentioned? And how did you come to that conclusion? So in Philippians chapter 2, verse 12, it says that we must work out our salvation with fear and trembling. And so this means that we have to work in order for us to obtain a future salvation. And so even in James chapter 2, verse 24, it talks about how, we ha how faith is not enough. And it says that more than faith is required. And so, um, if, so we have to demonstrate that we... You know, we have to demonstrate our faith by, by works, and so by that it shows our true feelings about Jehovah. Okay. Um, so let me just see if I'm understanding you correctly. Are you saying that unless one obeys these things, there's no hope of salvation? Yes. 
That's correct. Okay, so if that's correct, my question to you is, how are you doing? And how are you going to make it in the last days? Well, I'm, I'm, I'm not sure. That's, that's for Jehovah to decide. Wait, so you're telling me that you're out here sharing about this kingdom, and you yourself aren't very sure of it? So you're out there doing field work, offering something to people, and there's no guarantee of assurance they'll receive it. Well, like I said, only Jehovah knows. Hmm. Okay, well, let me, if it's okay with you, let me kind of paint a picture for you. Sure. You're like a man who's been given a checkbook by the CEO of a big corporation, and your responsibility is to proclaim that the CEO of this big corporation is giving out free checks, and you have been chosen as the guy to write these checks out. And all the people would have to do is receive it and cash it. The, CE, the CEO even goes to far as say, so, so far as to say, write one for yourself as well. But as you write these checks, you begin to doubt. You begin to question whether these checks are real. You're wondering if it's taken to the bank, whether or not it'll clear. Even the one you wrote to yourself. You don't exactly know, and you're unsure if it's really going to be yours. That's basically what's happening here as well. You're not sure about your salvation, but yet you're out here sharing how others can receive the salvation. So my question to you is, how can you share something you're not even sure about? How can you share something you yourself are uncertain about? Can you see you're giving people a false hope? Can you see that you're giving people kind of a false security? Yeah, I, I do kind of see that. Okay, look, I want you to understand that as a Christian, I have a great confidence and great assurance of my hope of salvation. Do you want to know how I have such a, a certainty in my salvation? Sure. Okay, well, 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 first, let's start with the character of God and who He is. In Numbers 23, 19, we're just going to list the verses. I don't have them off top. And, and, and we learn from this verse that God is not a man and he doesn't lie. And if he has said something, he will do it. And in 1 Samuel 15, 29, again, it teaches us that God does not lie and he does not change his mind. Since the scriptures teach clearly that God cannot lie, I place my confidence in who he is. Secondly, my confidence is in Christ and his promises. In John 3.15, it assures us that whoever believes in him may have eternal life. In John 5.24, it says, Truly, truly, I say to you that whoever hears my voice and believes him who sent me has eternal life. He does not come into judgment, but has passed from death to life. John, in, in, in John 20, it says that all these things are written so that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, and by believing, you may have life in his name. I also want to let you know that over 200 times in the New Testament, salvation is to be said of faith alone, nothing to do with our works. And salvation is a free gift. An example of this is in, in Romans 6, 23. It says the wages of sin is death, but the free gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. And, and just to illustrate this with an, 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 an illustration, Imagine this. Imagine I give you a cell phone as a gift, and then I say, you must do A, B, and C to receive this. Would that truly be a gift? No. Or if I say, here, take my phone as a gift, but I turn around and say, you owe me 25 cents. Would that be a gift anymore? No. Well, it doesn't matter how much I ask for. If I ask for something, a gift is no longer a gift. If I demand something from you, it's no longer a gift anymore. Does that make sense? Yeah, it, it makes sense. So since God has spoken, and I've shown you the scriptures that God does not lie, my plea to you is to cling to his promises. Today, if you hear his voice, repent and trust in Christ for salvation, not the Christ of the watchtower, not an organization, but the Christ of the scriptures, the Son of God alone. In Romans 10, it says, if you confess with your mouth, Jesus says, Lord, and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For with the heart a person believes, resulting in righteousness, and with the mouth he confesses, resulting in salvation. So let me ask you this, my friend. When are you going to put your trust in Christ alone? I think I want to do it right now. Awesome, man. Can I pray for you? Sure. Awesome. <laughs> <laughs> All right. 
So um, obviously a much better uh, <laughs> example than the defeater. Um, so let's kind of get into it. And I know it's, it was a lot to kind of memorize all, all the things. And I'll ask you guys some questions along the way as well. But let's talk about number one. The first thing that happened was the same thing as last time. There was uh, the compliment. There was the even, you know, introducing himself. So there was the attempt at building rapport. Same thing as last time um, that, that happened in the prior example. And again, just remember, people are made in the image of God. These are people that we're called and commanded to love when he says, love your neighbor. So these are not practice dummies, right? This is not for us to just, you know, try out our evangelism tactics, <laughs> you know. Um, these are people who God loves. Um, and potentially these are people who are his sheep that he's calling to himself. And we're involved and we may be involved in them coming to Christ's fold. So what was... Um, what was the first major change in this example? Was Wang looking for a d debate or was he looking for a, to just have a conversation? It was a conversation, right? It wasn't, he wasn't looking for, you know, um, an argument. Uh, I mean, he was wanting to argue, but in a positive sense, he was wanting to have a conversation. Um, and instead of making kind of those sweeping statements, kind of those inflammatory statements that he made last time, what did he do differently? What was the one thing that he did better? I'd rather say, what did he do better in this example? He did the last time, and it's something we've been teaching over the past couple weeks, but what did he do again but more? He listened. He listened. Yeah, he listened more. Amen. That's one thing for sure, certain. What do you mean by that? What do you mean? By, there you go, that one. What do you mean by that? He asked questions, and more questions, and more inquiries, and more inquiries. Uh, and they were... Um, they weren't just like what, when, where, why, who, you know, it's like they were intentional and they were specific questions, but he kept on asking questions and they were good questions. He said, like you said, what do you mean by that? You know, or what, what do you mean when you say the good news of the kingdom, which he did in the, pre the previous one. Um, and then he said stuff like, what does that mean to you? What does that mean to you? And buckle up because when you ask somebody, what does that mean to you? you're in for a, a front row seat to everything they believe about whatever it is they believe. And I think we've kind of been talking about that part of evangelism. And this is kind of the beautiful thing is you can learn all kinds of things about people's beliefs in books. You can, you can learn about it again on YouTube videos, but you can get firsthand experience of what someone believes by just asking them questions. That'll open up amazing you know, knowledge on where they stand, what they believe. And by the way, People might be part of organizations and believe different things. So it's important for us not to just assume they're all in the same category together. Um, so uh, that question of what does that mean to you? So he then not only, you know, that question was answered, but he gave a breakdown of what he believed. But then, oh, go ahead, Andy. Yeah. You know, when we have conversations, very easy to kind of at a higher level once you have the conversation flowing. Like, that's not what that verse means. What are you talking about? 100%. Because you know, that would derail the conversation that, that flows nicely in the direction. Yes. And that is a, a great temptation. And then all you're doing is just debating about a scripture. Yeah. Yeah, to that point, there's a lot of times when you're talking to people and that, that's happening in real time. So you're kind of filtering in your brain, you know, as the conversation's happening, like, okay, I can jump to that, but what's going to be the most effective to really center the conversation upon? And you're going to want to, you know, as you get better at it, you're going to filter through those things and kind of learn, you know, the direction to take the conversation. Because, you know, it's not always going to play out like this, right? There's 50 different ways you can take the conversation. You're kind of thinking, what's the best to get to the gospel? Mm. Yeah. Yeah, um, Nancy. When you, you have done this, I can tell. Mm -hmm. So Caleb, how do you um, begin to, I mean, this is like the truth board, right? Evangelism is the truth board, God's truth. As a good foot soldier and a loving servant of Christ, how do you begin to do your battle plan? Like, 
and just prayer, prayer, prayer the whole time, listening, listening, mm-hmm. and, and prayer. I mean, man, it's like you got to have a lot going on. It's like, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I'm, I'm both of those things, right? I'm, I'm listening. I don't want to be too disengaged from what they're saying. Um, a lot of people listen just to respond, right? And the mm-hmm. whole time you're talking, they're thinking about what they're going to say. We don't want to be doing that. We want to genuinely be listening. And so I'm listening and I'm praying. And also you're, you're, you're in any conversation, you're thinking, okay, what am I going to say next? So all those things are happening simultaneously. And it sounds like a lot, but the more you do it, like you don't want to be consciously thinking, oh, I need to be doing all these things during the conversation, right? Because then you're just going to get distracted. You're not going to be present it's going to naturally happen when you do it more and more. And that's kind of our point of the classes and the point of having, you know, the third Sundays of having people go out and do it because over time, it's just going to naturally happen. Do you, have you, um, as you do this thought about, well, I might encounter a Jehovah's witness or I might encounter a Peter person. Like, do you have go-to verses that you, you think of, or do you just rely on the spirit to bring them to you or both? Or what do you do? Yeah, I think both. Um, So what's being played out here, asking the questions first and foremost. But I think I do have, you know, a few sort of um, problem passages, you could say, or certain um, things that Jehovah's Witness do in regards to like twisting the scriptures. Just because in conversations, you may talk to a Jehovah's Witness and up front, they're trying to play it off like you guys believe all the same things, right? And so I have certain passages in my mind that I can ask them about, say, John 1, 1 in their scriptures. They kind of change it or just certain points, certain major differences that I may ask them about, you know, just because if, if you don't, I mean, we've seen it play out before, right? To where you talk to somebody and they say they're something and you don't have any, you know, background into their religion and you leave the conversation thinking they're a Christian, right? Because you don't know sort of those little distinctions. So yeah. if that makes sense. And I, and I think... Um, what Andy was saying by him intentionally uh, listening, actively listening, we would call it. He got to the core issue, which was the lack of assurance. So it's like, he could have been like, man, I can't wait to get to John one, one, right? I can't wait to get these texts. I'm going to show them in Isaiah, right? There's a passage in Isaiah about, you know, there's all these passages. I can't wait to, you know, use those. That's not what happened. He just listened to what this man believed. He found, this sounds terrible, like the chink in his armor, right? A bit. And, and he addressed that. That's what he, he, he honed in on. Uh, and it was the lack of assurance that led into, well, let me share how I actually have assurance. And this is why I have assurance. Character of God and, and all those passages. Let me think. Oh, uh, pa- the value like, of that, because that's what stood out to me, is that when you think of a Jehovah's Witness, I mean, if you've been a Christian for a while and you're trying to be aware of others' beliefs and all you, what do you, what's the number one thing you think about with Jehovah's Witness? Well, they don't believe Jesus is God. Right. You know, so you could already be gearing up for that. And, and you know, you have that there available as you're telling us, but <clears throat> but the value of, of what you showed us here is that Wang representing the Jehovah's Witness, he's also geared up to fight against, yeah. mm-hmm. uh, you know, so the moment that you, if you were to switch and pivot and go after the Lordship or, or the, the deity of Christ, yeah you may have lost at that point because he's already prepared to fight back. Mm. But on this one, he was vulnerable, he was weak, because he doesn't have assurance. And by by following the track of the conversation and what God, through the Spirit of God, caused to be revealed, you went at the place where he was most needing to hear, not the battle he was probably already prepared to fight. Yeah, Yeah, and I, I think that's primary, right? Following the flow of the conversation, if the conversation comes to a dead spot, that's where I might bring up some of these other things that I've thought about beforehand or certain scriptures. But first, to your point, first and foremost, follow what's there, you know, show the person you care about listening to them. One principle I try to take into evangelism is evangelize to others how you would want to be evangelized to, right? Hmm. So if somebody's just hitting you over the head the whole time, I'm not going to listen to you, you know, but if you're willing to have a conversation, I'm more willing to engage with you. So yeah, that's great. Yeah evangelize to others as you would want them. I like that. That's great. Lem.
making sure that each party identifies the terms so that you don't assume, oh, I know what you're talking about when you say that word. Yeah. You could be completely wrong because they have a different belief system. Yeah. So it was just really neat to see how he just kept asking, so what does that term mean? What does that term mean to you? And, and I thought that was really helpful. Yeah. And you know, um, man, that's great too. Because again, if you just think, oh, this is Jehovah's Witness, he's in a cult and he's on the broad path of destruction, let me save him. <laughs> you know, uh, not everybody's in the same camp. I mean, they may be in the organization, but very well could be God's working that in their heart and drawing them to himself and may even be saved, right? Um, when I got saved, you guys wouldn't believe I was saved. Nobody in here, no one would have been like, that guy's a Christian. I would have been the most carnal Christian you ever seen, right? You'd have been like, this guy, there's no way he's come to faith. But you had no idea that God was doing crazy work in my heart, tra changing me, breaking me down, doing stuff in private that you guys had no idea of how he was drawing me to himself but, or you know, causing me to repent of my lifestyle and change. And I was even in some of the ca chaos of you know, uh, Bethel and all that stuff. I was visiting Bethel, you know, uh, going out and healing people and stuff. So... You would, have, you would have put me in the camp of, this guy's deceived, man. And yet, I was saved. So it's very important that we ask questions, right, Lynn? Yeah, that's, that's really, that was really important to remind me of a conversation that I had with someone. And um, they identified as a Catholic. And as I was sharing with them, I thought, okay, I'm going to go through all of these, like, what kills me. I got, I got this idea of Mary I'm going to talk about. I'm going to talk about purgatory. I have these ideas. And I said, so what does that mean to you? Like, what is a relationship look like with, with God? And he said, well, I know that I'm a sinner. Only Jesus can forgive me my sin. So then I was like, wait a minute. <laughs> wait a minute. So then I realized that maybe God, with everything that we're experiencing, is an orchestration of God. So it could have been that God allowed me to be there to encourage this brother rather than, you know, keep beating him on his head on, on certain things. And so yeah. it was just it was an important switch for me to make. And God is, like you said, God is working in people. And, and we can't just um, pigeonhole them because of their activity. Yeah. Yeah. One, one thing I do want to say too is as I was preparing this and, and through my experiences of like conversating with people um, I'm always looking for opportunities so like I know it's hard to swing over to like the spiritual things but I'm always looking for doors and so if you guys saw here then um, the Jehovah Witness actually opened the door to those, to those spiritual conversations because a lot of times people just, will just shut out and they won't, they won't even talk about it you know it's all either sports or it's it's, um, you know, other, other things, jobs. Um, sometimes I am pretty deliberate in just swinging over, but, uh, uh, but then I have noticed that there are times where I just need to be observant. And, I'm, I, 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 uh, you know, you, you pay attention, you listen to them, and then right when they swing or right when they open the doors, then you, you kind of, like, just take advantage of that, op of that opportunity to just talk about the spiritual things. And, yeah. You know, so that's, I, I was trying to show that here as well. Yeah. So just to kind of, like, help you guys. When you guys are, um, you know, you know, because I, I I struggle with trying to spark conversation too. But then sometimes those are there are opportunities where you could just yeah. swing right over and hey, this, now it's like you open the door, so I'm I'm gonna go right in and just share, you know, yeah. and uh, get into the spiritual things that, yeah, that matters most. I think if we also take the mindset of look, God is sovereign. He planned this day. He knew this day in advance. This random conversation is not random. God knew. And God's doing something. When you look at a, look God's sovereign, in His sovereign timing and purpose, that this day is happening, this conversation is happening, you can then just have a little bit more confidence that He knows what He's doing and just be willing to open your mouth and speak. Let Him fill your mouth. Let Him lead the conversation. Let Him lead you through the Holy Spirit. You guys have the Holy Spirit of God. If you are in Christ, the Spirit of God is in you. And He will lead you. And He will guide you. He will give you the words to speak. And a lot of times, you're right, bro. The conversations just happen. They're like, yeah, man, my mom died last night. And you're like, what is happening right now? <laughs> this is like, I didn't have to dig in. It's just there. You know, the harvest is plentiful. He meant that. It's true. The harvest is plentiful. The labor is a few. So we are out of time. Man, we could do this for like another hour. <laughs> Reformation, yeah. I loved it to talk to them. 
we, I don't, uh, part of this uh, course, no, but there's elements of what you're going to learn that you can take. Um, Do you have lessons? Yeah, huh? Do you have no, we have, we have planned um, roles, and, and that's not one of them, but maybe gather some of the tools and things that we're, we're giving to then implement it with others. Because obviously we're not going into like Sikh or Buddhism and all, so a lot of other things, that, religions, right, that we're not going to get into, but there's practical principles that you can apply when engaging anyone, which is the strategy, which is the strategy yeah. And, and I'll just say, not not everything there is to know about evangelism is going to be taught in the class, and so and not every question you have needs to be asked in the class. You can come up to any of us at any point, or you know, Todd has some background in that, so you can ask him specific questions about you know whatever you know. Um, Wang has studied a lot about the Jehovah's Witnesses, so you can come up to any of us at any time and Thank ask you. questions. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, and, and speak with one another afterward because you'll find that, you know, a lot of us have different family members from different backgrounds or we've engaged in, in different people and we might have a lot of knowledge just here in the room yeah. to share. So let's pray. Father, thank you for this time. What a wonderful time it was this morning. Um, Lord, we pray that um, all these things would lead us to have a greater hunger, a greater desire to share the gospel with others, with those who are lost. Uh, we were once blind as well. We were once dead and separated from you and yet you brought someone to share the gospel with us or even give a gospel track and uh, we came to know you our wonderful savior oh lord we pray that you will continue to encourage folks through these principles and that we would actually put them into practice lord in jesus name amen